Time to have on Josh Clark, who is running against Herschel for the nomination to uh, take on uh, Pastor Warnick. Josh Clark, welcome to the Hugh Hewitt Show. How are you? I am fantastic, Hugh. Thank you so much for having me this morning. Let's start by telling people how they find you and then tell us about you. Where are you online? Handles, websites, Twitter, all that sort of stuff. Yes, uh, you can find me at votejosh.com. Again, that's votejosh.com. You'll find all of my social media links there at the very top. Votejosh.com. Thank you. And now tell us your bio. What's the backstory, Josh? Sure. Well, you know what? I'm uh, just a uh, common, ordinary Georgia patriot. I was born and raised in, here in Georgia and uh, grew up in a, I like to say an average family, but I don't know if 10 children is average, but I'm the oldest <laughs> of 10 children. And uh, my father was a pastor of a small church. And uh, so we were the poor, the poor talked about with 10 of us on a preacher salary. And my mother was a teacher who I'm so grateful. God bless her and all the homeschool parents. She decided to homeschool us. And so it I grew up, you know, being blessed to learn the American family values that seem to be under attack everywhere we turn today, but faith in God, hard work, serving others. My mother, speaking of serving others, my mother, Hugh, lost her health uh, due to missing, uh, losing, <laughs> missing, but losing three organs, a kidney, a spleen, and adrenal in an accident. Oh, dear. But the oldest, it was, you know, fell on me to step up and help raise the younger siblings and you know, I look back and I think, you know, I'm grateful for it, you know, except I wouldn't change anything except for mom's health, so, her suffering. But, you know, I learned that life wasn't about me. I loved history and learning about our founding fathers and previous generations that also rose to the occasion to overcome the challenges before them. And today the, the challenges are greater than ever. But I, I got out of high school and I immediately, shortly after, I got involved in the Republican Party as far as just volunteering, just trying to help get good constitutional conservatives elected. I believe that scriptures say when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, and when the wicked rule, the people mourn. And today we're doing a lot of mourning. But in my 20s, I was trying to turn this state red while I was building a couple of companies that are still around today and starting a family. I married my childhood sweetheart, known since I was five, and we have six children. And at 30, I was challenged myself to run for office, which is something that wasn't part of my plans. I thought I'd be a, more likely a pastor or a missionary that supported myself through my businesses. But I did. I ran in a race that nobody thought we had any chance, and we ended up winning in a landslide victory thanks to a great team and hard work. And I, ta- I call myself the proven conservative because I think it, it really – you know, tells the story and, and, and really distinguishes me from the candidates in that we're running for the highest office in the land, the U.S. Senate, yet nobody has, you know, any legislative experience. Some of them, in fact, were voting Democrat for years while I was working to turn the party, turn the state red. And so, but I, but I served you and I walked away. How many times do we see, don't we wish we saw more politicians that would serve, do their duty, make a difference? Was this in the uh, in in a county office or the Georgia Assembly? Uh, I was uh, in the Georgia Assembly. Oh, thank you. Josh Clark. Which which part of Georgia were you representing? I represented one of the fastest growing counties in the nation, Gwinnett County. Okay, okay. So keep going. So you you did your time. You term limited yourself voluntarily, and you went back to business, I assume, and taking care of the family. That's right. I went back into business for the past eight years. I gained a, not only a, do I have companies that we own today, but I uh, built my 20s, but I got some executive experience. I served as the executive vice president for an international company called Neolife. They sell health and wellness products. And then uh, in 2020, just a lot of sleepless nights watching what was happening to our country. And, you know, when I had served those two terms in the Georgia House, I had, you know, I, I had really every day I'd walk underneath that gold dome and I'd try to honor those who had given their life for our country. I have four brothers who served on the front lines of Afghanistan. And uh, I'll, never for, I'll never forget uh, one of my brothers. In fact, he's, he's a representative. Uh, he's an Army Ranger and now in, in the, the, the highest level of training, <laughs> bad to the bone. I'll just leave it at that. He's finishing that up right now. But he, he said something to me that I'll never, ever forget for the rest of my life. He was 23 and I was 30 years old when I ran uh, the first time and served. And he said to me, he said, Josh, 
if we lose this country from within, then my comrade who lost his life the second week over there is in vain. And I thought that was a, really a lot of wisdom and the right perspective for every public servant to have. That's what this is about, ensuring the blessings of liberty for the next generation. And when I served, I earned the, def- in fact, earned the Defender of Liberty Award for my 100% conservative voting record. You know, as a small businessman, I was not only did I, was I proud of some of the social issues that, that we fought and, and that being a uh, fetal pain bill that we passed, but also as a businessman, I helped remove red tape and regulations for business owners and traveled the state with hearing sessions, listening to them. And I'm proud of what we got done and making Georgia together as a team. We made Georgia the most business friendly state in the nation. That was actually my stated goal in my campaign, but but you, you shouldn't stick to me. You serve, and then you move on, and that's what I did. I moved on, went back to private life, but I'm stepping up now because we're under attack. And those blessings of liberty, I believe they are – we're at a point, a tipping point, where if we don't get the right people on this red wave, it doesn't matter to me. It's not about me. It's not about them. It's not about celebrity status. It's about who has a proven record that will step up and fight and stand alone if necessary. Now, Josh Clark, let me let me jump in here. Uh, people yeah. listen to my show every day. It's got 470 affiliates. I have on candidates from Washington State yesterday in Ohio, from Pennsylvania. You're from Georgia. From Te- I talk to people because I. It's my belief that Americans are interested in every race. They care deeply about getting the Senate back. We have to beat Raphael Warnick. Why are you a better candidate to beat Raphael Warnick than anyone else running? Of course, the big name is Herschel Walker. We don't deny. Why are you better than Herschel and everybody else to take on Pastor Warnick and beat him? Yeah. Well, number one, none of them ha- were. Well, let me back up. We're running for the U.S. Senate, of course. And that's not two years like Congress. It's not four years like the president. It's six years. It's so long, it's almost scary. You can either do a lot of good or a lot of bad. You know, and we, and we learned in the past we had a. Uh, a nice man, a, a military hero, appreciated service, John McCain, right? He, he served our nation, and then he went to the U.S. Senate. We found out just because you served in the military, like 13 immediate family members of, of ours, four of my brothers. I mean, again, I hold them in the highest regard. But I've learned the hard way we have as a nation that just because you're military doesn't necessarily mean you're conservative. And so, we, you know, John, thanks to John McCain, we still have Obamacare. You know, and I have been in the trenches, rolled up my sleeves to try to help get what I thought were good people elected that gave great stump speeches, only to be severely disappointed. So we have all these people, nice people. Some of them are voting Democrat for years. Um, others, like Herschel Walker, I really appreciate how he stood for Donald Trump. I appreciate um, you know him getting involved in doing that. But, you know, he himself said over a year ago that we need to I have the video that we need to change the Constitution because of changing demographics. And I believe that we've got a I, 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 why did we change the Constitution because of changing demographics? That's scary. And so I think he's a great man, a nice person. But I think between that and the fact that he cannot win in November, I mean, if you read his book, and I'll leave it at that. I don't want to get into all the gory details, but if you read the book, I, I believe in redemption and forgiveness, but the reality is the Democrats will not forgive. They will not forget, and they're going to nail them on that, and we have to win in November. This is, you know, as you know, pundits across the country are saying this is the most likely U.S. Senate seat to flip if we get the right person. So I'm the proven conservative. I'm the guy who can go head-to-head with Raphael Warnock. I mean, I, I can't wait. To, I mean, his only qualification is he's a reverend. Well, if he wants to talk about the Scriptures I've got books. Of the I don't Bible. think I'm going to play Bible Jeopardy with you, Josh Clark. I don't. I get the sense I'm not going to play Bible Jeopardy with a PK. But let me <laughs> let me close this way. Um, I, you came to my attention because I've got a great GM of an affiliate down on San Simeon Island. Said so you got to talk to Josh Clark. So you broke through because you got to me. How do you break through national? Is this the first national show you've done? Do people know you're out there and running? Yeah, you know what? I'm really thankful. We're making a the, – the momentum is on our side. We live in a 45-foot Liberty bus right now as we – 45-foot Liberty bus that my wife drives as I'm in the back making phone calls. But we're crisscrossing the state as a family. We made this decision as a family because this affects all of us, and we really need families to step up. Family values are majorly under attack. And so we're as we're doing this, we are actually getting – by God's grace, I'm thankful and an amazing team of volunteers all across the state. 
we, the momentum is on our side. In fact, I even had Trump's deputy reach out to me recently, and he said, Josh, whatever you're doing, you're doing the right thing. We were asked to look into your race. And he said, the, mom- the other guys aren't moving, and Herschel's fallen 20 points and is falling. And 39% of his voters say they would vote for some, they, they would consider voting for someone else. It's wide, name ID is wide, but it's very shallow. And so, as the only person that's a proven conservative in this race with the experience to go fight and stand up for our values and the Constitution from day one, that's me. And, you know, and Hugh, one more distinction. You know, speaking of standing alone, I've been tested in the legislature. I'll never forget when the Obamacare, the Non-Affordable Care Act, they were trying to roll it out in our state. And I didn't just say, I won't vote for that. I went office by office, door by door, convincing people, we can't do this. And I remember when the, the speaker, when the leadership called me up and said to me, son, who do you think you are the tail wagging the dog? You need me to get reelected. And I said, sir, in all due respect, and this is where I was tested, and this is where I've learned the difference between just being a nice person and somebody who has a spine and will stand and for the next generation. And I told him, I said, when I get home at night and I kiss my kids in the forehead, I need to know that my service was for the next generation. When I lay my head on the pillow, I need a clear conscience between me and God. And then after that, as much as I can, I'll work with people to get things done if it's for the next generation, and if it's within the clearly defined lane of the Constitution and the powers granted to the federal government. And On that note, Josh. Need, and I think we can win. VoteJosh.com. I don't know how you got that, that handle because that's a great one. It's easy to remember. VoteJosh.com. Josh Clark, candidate for United States Senate in Georgia.